So before we get started today, I uh, just wanted to show you the files that we're going to be working with. Uh, we're going to be starting a brand new series uh, for custom crops. It's going to take about five weeks to complete and uh, it's going to be from everything from coding uh, or basically building in the, the blocks, uh, the stages, items and stuff like that to everything from coding, how to use make it use bone meal and everything like that. So. Um, <clears throat> uh, so for the models, uh, what I've used is I've just gone into the Minecraft jar and I've uh, hauled out the crop uh, Jason model and I've just renamed it different stages so we could basically use the same model as crops. So uh, let's get started and then we will uh, start with importing the items, getting that all set up and then we'll move on. Alright, so given that you have a brand new workspace to work with, if you don't, then uh, just follow the same steps. Uh, go to resources, and then what you want to do is import your textures. So I have a few textures already made. I have a texture for every block um, stage, so we're going to import those first. So let's go to the desktop where I'm storing the folder on global crops, textures, blocks, and these are my stages. So I'm going to import stage one, stage, well, this would be stage one, stage zero is the other one, and then two, and then finally three. So now we need the textures for the items, and if I go back one folder and go in here, grab the fruit, and let's grab the seeds as well. Okay, so once you have all that, all your block stages and your items imported, what you want to do is go to 3D models, go to import JSON model, and I'm going to navigate to where the models were and import stage zero. And I'm going to select my stage zero block model texture and just continue doing that for every block state that you want to add. So I only have four here. Uh, you can go as many as you want. I think um, wheat has something like eight block models. Okay, so once you have all that imported, uh, we can finally make the um, seeds and the actual crop item so let's do that uh, first we need to go to item and then we need to give it a name so I'm going to call it crop uh, we will work on seeds first and then we'll select our seed texture you don't need to worry about anything here uh, you need to give it a GUI name And uh, miscellaneous is fine for where it is. Uh, you do want it to stack to 64. Uh, all this is fine up until here. What we want to do is um, can be dropped as grass seed. Now this is a random possibility if someone breaks grass. Um, now it says here that 10 is uh, like the same normal amount as regular seeds, uh, where one is very rare. So. I'm just going to set it to 10 and then click next and we're going to worry about um, setting up the actual procedure and everything to actually plant uh, the seeds in a separate tutorial so we're just going to click next and now we need the food item uh, this can also be a regular food item or this can be a just a generic item as well so I'm just going to make a generic item, kind of very similar to uh, what weed is. Um, crop fruit. And then we're going to select our fruit texture. And we don't need to worry about pretty much anything outside of the GUI name. So I'm going to call it uh, crop fruit and you don't need to worry about any of the other settings or procedures. 
All right, so once we have all that imported, what we need to do is uh, go to block and create our first stage, crop um, block stage zero. We're gonna create a new block. We're gonna select our render model. So we're gonna go with stage zero first. Um, this should be on MIPT. Uh, now cutout basically allows MIPT to, it, it's hard to explain, but what MIPT basically does is have, it has better rendering at further distances. Uh, translucent, um, not sure. This is just general render, rendering. It looks a little bit worse than if you were to use MIPT. So I try to use MIPT a little bit more. Um, as far as the box, Coordinates. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So on the forms, I've created a how to use um, block dimensions. It's in English. Uh, it's on my official website, and it's under the mcreate or Northwest Streets Gaming Forms um, creator and creator tutorials, and then it's under here. So if you go to the bottom here, you can see that there is a table where you can basically easily figure out what um, dimensions you need for your pixels and stuff. So this first model has um, only two pixels. So what we want to do is actually copy, um, oh, I think we'll be able to copy it. I ran into some problems earlier with doing this and just going to your, um, maximum y coordinates and pasting it in yeah it's still gonna have some issues okay so you're gonna have to type it out manually sadly but um, what I'm basically doing is if we minimize that a little bit go to global crops textures items nope blocks so as you can see I only used to um, pixels in height. So all this space is irrelevant to the actual crop being growing, right? So basically what we're doing is resizing the hitbox to only be this high. So what we need to do is calculate how much of this space we don't need. And by doing that, the easiest way is to just calculate using this table here that I've created and going from the highest part so 16 pixels, and then calculating on how many pixels that are already used. So we're only using two pixels, so that's the amount that we need. Now mCreator only has uh, three digits that you can use, so the ones with the four digits are, re are relevant, but they're actually the official um, amount per pixel. So I just wanted to make sure that information was in there. But, um, other than that, uh, we also need to offset the minimum Y coordinate to 0 0.001. And what this will basically do is it will allow your block to not destroy farmland. Uh, this is quite important when you're actually growing your crops and like uh, gr growing your crops. Uh, if it's at zero, then it will destroy your farmland. If it's any number below that, then it should be fine. Um, or a little bit higher uh, off the farmland. Um, I have tested it on 0 0.001 and it works perfectly fine. Now for your X coordinates and your Y coordinates on your max and min, um, you don't need to actually adjust those. It's probably better if you don't, honestly. Um, I have noticed that harvesting the crops with them adjusted actually has some issues breaking and you end up destroying the farmland or other parts because they're, it's not seamless so it's best just to leave them at a solid thing. Last thing that you need to do is um, set the actual block texture on the bottom to your stage. Uh, this basically allows you to update the item icon in the mCreator's uh, GUI, so that just that's all that 
that basically does. Uh, this is actually where all your textures are stored for your model. So, all right. So now we're on to block uh, properties. So what we're gonna do is give it a GUI name. Zero. Um, hardness and resistance should be set to zero. Uh, we will leave it under building blocks for the time being, uh, just for testing purposes. We will be changing it to no uh, tab entry. So that will be in the future, but we need it for testing purposes right now. Um, now, what we're gonna end up doing is setting the material to fire. This is actually quite important for making it so we can actually destroy it with water. So what we're also gonna need to do is set the tick rate to 100 and this will help. Um, this is basically where um, we're gonna be configuring the time that it takes to grow rather than using a randomizer. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to disable affected by silk touch. We need to have a custom drop and then we need to select our seeds. Uh, pretty much for any other stage other than the last stage you want to select seeds. And the drop amount I would just leave at default one. I'd like to have it set to axe for the type of tool to destroy. Uh, just because it makes more sense because it's like a plant like plant life material it's not really stone or dirt so that's the reason why I usually set it to that um, the sound I would set to plants and you want it to be able to walk through it as well uh, the harvest level I would set to zero so that's all the properties that you should have on every um, stage between um, your first stage and the stage just before the last stage. So just make sure to pause the video if you need to and copy the settings right now. All right, so let's move on. If you want particle effects, you enable that and you select your particle rendering types and you can fill that out. It's not too complicated. Um, I don't really need to do a in-depth tutorial on how to do particles, I don't think. Uh, we will be using MBT data to do uh, localized um, uh, variables. So what we need to do is enable this and we need to set this to zero. And I'm just going to disable both of these and that should be fine. So just make sure this is enabled. This is set to zero these aren't checked and move on and we're going to do procedures and in separate tutorials um, we have a few of them to do like right click to update tick and the two destroyed by players are um, destroyed by player and destroyed by explosion so those are a couple of different tutorials that we're going to be doing as well so that's for another uh, video for the series but uh, we will be getting to it in the future and spawning properties you don't need to set this because um, we have it already programmed using seeds to drop so we don't need any spawning properties in here so make your other stages uh, between um, this stage zero and whatever stage just before the last stage the same properties as this one and I'll do a tutorial in just a second, uh, like a showcase, uh, explain what the next stage needs to be after I get all those in. All right, so just to cover everything that should be the same, uh, your settings here for all your block stages, you will have to adjust your height here um, and your block model and the texture, but all the other settings on here is the same for all your other block stages. Uh, all these settings should be the same other than your crop stage GUI, and that's it. Um, this should be the same, and that's everything. So same 
same settings, uh, you'll need to make sure your Y coordinate matches the height, your model's different, and, or for the proper version or proper state that you're using, and the texture here is different. Um, that should be zero. Uh, okay, and then all the settings should be the same as well as the only thing different is your GUI name and that's it. So I'll move next, next, and then this should be the same and we'll be working on that later. So the next thing that we need to do is work on our final stage, the one that we'll be actually harvesting the crop on. It's not too much different than the other block stage, we're just configuring it just a little bit differently. So what we're going to be doing is creating another block, going crop, block, and then stage, your last stage number. And then we're going to go and create block, we're going to select our final stage number for our model and then we're going to go MIPT and we're going to set this to 0 0.001 and this is the full size of the block so we don't need to adjust the Y coordinates on this one we do need to select our texture though we need to select our GUI name for block properties so crop stage 3 uh, we need to set these to 0 uh, we will be adjusting the creative tab in the future and then we need to set it to fire and now you don't necessarily need to set this to 100 uh, we were using it for block growth but because it's on uh, the last stage uh, it's not needed to set it to 100 so I'm just going to leave it at the default ticks because it's not really needed to actually adjust that because it's not going to be doing anything other than... Um, well, actually, we should probably adjust it. There is the dropping properties if the um, soil becomes... Uh, like the farmland becomes to dirt, so we should probably keep that the same. Alright, so the next thing that we need is to select our tool. I'm just going to keep it consistent. We want it to not drop itself, and then we want to select our fruit. Uh, this is different from the other ones where we use seeds. We just want one amount, and then this, the uh, sound on step. We want plants. We want to be able to walk through it, and we don't need that. Uh, the harvest level set to one so make sure it's set to zero uh, explosion uh, or properties is pretty much whatever you've configured it to it should be the same uh, you want to enable this again for your last stage as well as your, all your other stages and set this to zero uncheck these boxes and move on to procedures and then finally this and that's all there is for importing your actual properties of your elements and stuff like that. So the next thing that we're going to be working on is um, in a separate video and we're going to be working on setting up the procedure for our seeds which will be when player right clicked on block and then we're going to set up a procedure for that. Uh, that will be for a separate tutorial because it's pretty complex on how to get all that programmed and stuff. I'm going to make it as simple as I can, but um, again, uh, it's just a matter of making sure that uh, the tutorials aren't too compact with each other and the time doesn't take so long. But uh, outside of that, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's tutorial. Uh, next week we're going to be continuing this tutorial and um, working on the seeds aspect of things. And then finally we're going to be working on the rest of the procedures and stuff on separate tutorials throughout the next course of the four weeks that are remaining. So outside of that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.